Okay, let's try this again. Third time lucky. Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday the 28th of September and I have got a vlog style, question style, bit about my day <laughs> video to share with you for this week. So I did record some footage earlier this morning. However, it was dark when I left the house at 6 a.m. and I don't think you can see very much, so that might not be of any use. Um, I have got a little bit of footage of what I did this morning, which I will input here for you. It wasn't very exciting. I've been to the gym. I have been to work, taken the girls to school. I then went to the post office to post a parcel. I've been to Hobbycraft. Oh, I must get what I bought from Hobbycraft. I will show you that. Um, I've come home, I've showered, made myself look presentable for you. Oh, look, I'm getting myself caught in my microphone. Um, I have a coffee and I have something here that I want to share with you when I'm done with my questions and answers. This is a third time lucky recording. The first time I realised that I had laundry going and it was too loud. The second time I got about five minutes in and realised I didn't have my microphone on. So fingers crossed, third time lucky. So I put a question box up on Instagram for you guys to ask me some questions so that I had that to do for you today. So I'm going to go ahead and answer those. There were quite a few, so I'm going to do my best to get through them. And there are also some that were duplicates. So hopefully I will be able to cover everybody's question and answer. But first, coffee. Because it's 11.20 and I feel like half my day's gone and I haven't even done very much yet. So let's get started. The first question was, do I knit English or continental? I knit English. So I hold my yarn in my right hand and yeah, I knit English style. I'm not a thrower. I can't throw. I can't get my tension right to be a thrower. Um, I can knit continentally, but I really struggle purling continentally. And I think it took me such, well, it felt like such a long time to get my tension and everything right when I learnt to knit English style but I don't want to go back to the beginning I'd love to knit continentally but I don't want to go back to the beginning and relearn the whole tension thing again and get it and get it right and have a few sloppy projects until I have got it right so I knit English style and I'm quite happy doing that I'm slower I guess than I would be if I was continental but it is what it is <laughs> my least favorite item to knit hmm now that's a good question if you'd have asked me a couple of weeks ago, I'd have said like cuddly toys, amigurumi. I think amigurumi is a crochet term, isn't it? I don't know. Anything small that has to be sewn together, not a fan of. However, I did just join in Imagine Landscapes Gnome Knit Along and I am loving it. So there's not anything that I don't really like knitting, but I don't like, say a garment for instance that you then have to seam together I would much rather pick up the stitches and continue knitting than make you know the sleeves and then the front the back whatever and have to seam it all together I just I don't like it I'm not good at sewing I can barely sew on a button so anything that requires a needle is not really my forte I mean I just about weave in my ends <laughs> so um Anything that needs seeming is the answer to that question. Uh, <laughs> what happened with my stranger socks was one of my questions. Did the stranger like my socks? I don't know because she's collecting them today. And instead of finishing the toe, I'm sat here chatting to you. <laughs> I have to admit, I regretted instantly saying yes to the stranger about her socks. And then I went through a phase of you know life's not too bad it's a good deed she'll love them and then I got to the second sock and I've despised every single stitch <laughs> I've not been angry but you know when you're just well this is how I felt I'll be brutally honest with you guys I've sat there and I've knitted it and I'm like Ugh, I could be knitting on something for me oh, why are these socks not finished yet? Oh my gosh, I can't believe that I agreed to do this for the entire second sock. And like I say, I still have the toe. 
to do and she's coming supposedly to ballet tonight to collect them if she doesn't turn up oh man i'm gonna be in such a mood so let's see what happens with the stranger socks it's on a day that i'm doing a vlog so obviously i'm not going to record the stranger but i can let you know how that goes one of the questions was where were you supposed to go in the us why can't i go and florida is lovely in october florida is lovely in october and Florida was where I was supposed to be coming. So um, I did put up a post uh, on my stories asking for winter sun holiday destination recommendations. Gosh, that was a mouthful. Uh, because our holiday to Florida has just been canceled. My dad had agreed to take us all on a family holiday. My sister, me, my husband, her children, my mum and dad, obviously. And we had it all planned. We were supposed to be going on October 22nd for two and a bit weeks, two weeks, something like that. Two weeks, I think. And we were doing the whole Disney thing. We were doing Universal, SeaWorld, Bush Gardens. we have done it a lot as children, but we haven't done it so much as adults. And my sister's children have never been and they're 11 and 15. So we thought that's a really good age for them. Unfortunately, we now can't go because the US has decided to open its borders for travel in early November. We don't even have a date yet um, as I'm recording this. They have just said early November, which is really frustrating because it's obviously only a few days after we were supposed to go. And we'd arranged holiday with work and everything obviously to come and we can't all jiggle that there's obviously there's five of five adults going so that's five lots of rejigging work plans and it's not so easy for me because my nanny family have planned to go away too so obviously they're not going to rejig their holiday just so I can rejig my holiday dates so um we weren't able to do that this year and we're really disappointed we totally understand why um but I was gutted because I was also supposed to be meeting my friend Kristen. She lives in the US, but she was going over to Florida for a little vacation too. And oh, I won't get to see her. So I'm really sad. But we're hoping to postpone it for June of next year. So fingers crossed that happens. That was my long story about my cancelled holiday. Fear not, I'm still having two weeks off work. And I think we're going to try and get away for a week of it. We aren't sure where yet, we aren't sure what week, but we need a break. And I appreciate that I did get a few messages saying, are you crazy? We're in the middle of a pandemic. Like, it's really not sensible. I can't believe you're going to fly. And I get that, I do. But I think sometimes we have to think about, yes, our physical health, but we also need to think about our mental health. And for me, in the past, I have struggled with my mental health somewhat and I need a break. I need to get out the same four walls. I need to be with my husband. I need to spend quality time. We haven't had a holiday like other people, right? For 18 months, two years. And we, we do really live for our holidays. And that's where we spend good quality time together doing things that we love. And so, Yes, I guess it's risky to travel, but we are both fully vaccinated and we feel that the pros outweigh the cons for us at this time. So that's my little rant about that. <laughs> um, my next question was, how old were you when you started knitting? So I had to really sit down and think about this one I think I was 25, 26 ish. So about six years ago, because I'm now 32. I first started knitting because a lot of my friends were having children and I wanted to hand make them something. That's actually not true. I started crocheting, sorry. Um, because I was under the presumption that it was easier and I had tried knitting when I was a child and couldn't get the hang of it. And I saw a mum at 
one of the after school clubs in my previous nanny role crocheting and thought it was amazing. So I learnt and I loved it but I thought it was somewhat limiting and then I think as soon as you get into the fibre arts you quickly find lots of patterns of things that you want to make and they all just turned out to be knitted things for me. So um, I needed something that was going to keep me busy. My husband and I were going through IVF at the time and not only did I want to make things for my friends and their children, I also wanted to be able to make things for my children. So although that IVF cycle didn't work, we it was a really good mental kind of getaway for me. I was able to just sit down and focus on something other than IVF and you know all the drugs and everything that was going on at that time. So that's why I started. I was about 25 and I have not stopped since. It is my favourite thing to do, if you hadn't guessed. Um, next question. I feel like I'm flying through them, but I don't want to be here all day. I don't want to keep you guys all day. My favourite pattern. Mm, this is a tricky one. Sorry, I'm just looking at the other questions. I think my favourite pattern and my favourite thing that I've knit to date are probably the same thing. I think that my Cascading Chevrons cardigan that I test knit for Amanda at Indecisive Crafter recently is my favourite thing. I absolutely love that cardigan and I haven't worn it yet because it's only just started getting cold here. It's quite thick and warm she says but this is quite a thin cardigan um but that is my favorite thing i have worn it around the house a bit um my favorite thing i've ever knit and probably my favorite pattern so far it's kind of a hard one because i love the anchors too um i'm really enjoying the ranunculus right now so it is quite hard for me to pinpoint down to one but one of those <laughs> is that good enough that's a good enough answer right there's a few um my favorite budget friendly yarn now that's a good question i need to think about it let me take a sip as you know i do buy quite a lot of hand dyed yarn just because i love it i think it's beautiful but i do think that i have used a fair amount of budget friendly yarn before um, I've used a fair amount of Lion Brand. I do love the Kobu yarn. That is a favourite of mine for kind of summer garments, I guess. The Anchors summer shirt particularly. I think other than that, the yarn I used for my Cascading Chevron's cardigan was from Hobbycraft actually, and it was the brand The Woman's Institute and it was the homegrown DK. So it's a 100% wool. Yes, it felt a bit rough, but once I knitted, up, knitted it up even and blocked it, washed it, laid it out, it actually became quite soft. So I'd say for big items like cardigans, sweaters, that sort of thing, I really love that yarn. Um, and it's actually always on three for two in Hobbycraft. So it was an absolute steal. I think I only paid about 25 pounds. And I think I, you check on my Ravelry, Ravelry page, it's down below, but I'm pretty sure I bought six balls and I only used four and a bit. I definitely have a whole one left because I wound them into cakes. So I now have a whole one left and I think I have a bit of another one too, probably about half. So I'd say that's a really, really good yarn to try. And favorite budget friendly yarn I've done that, favorite thing I've ever knit, my favorite bird and blend tea. Now I have a fair few that I haven't tried. I have to be honest, I'm trying to get through my stash, but right now it's all about the coffee for me. Um, I would probably say the blueberry pancake so far has been my favourite. 
I love that tea. I'm so sad that it's all gone. I'm waiting for pancake day in anticipation. I'm hoping that they'll bring it back um, this year. So, well, next year, obviously. This year will be over by then. I'm hoping they bring it back. There was also a really good one actually that came in that same packet that was pancake themed and I feel I should have been a bit more prepared and gone and got them. I can see them. They're in my kitchen. I think it was... I'm gonna go get it. Bear with me. Okay, I'm back. I got my teas. So let me see what it was called. I've still got, this is really bad isn't it, but I've still got lots of the um, Christmassy ones from last Christmas. Mr. Frosty, Panettone, Hazelnut Rocher, Butter Toffee Popcorn. Um, there's my empty blueberry pancake. I have no idea why I kept the empty packet. I think, pack it. I think it was because then I would know to reorder it for next time. Oh, there might be crumbs. <laughs> uh, What's this one? Salted Caramel Le Buchen. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, I know that's German, isn't it? Cherry Cola Bottles. I've not tried that one yet either. There's quite a few, isn't there, that I haven't tried. Um, ah, this is the one. Strawberry and Nutella Pancakes. I don't know what it is about the pancakes ones, but this is a really good one too. I think I'll probably get through this one next, to be honest. And it just smells. I wish you could smell it. It smells so chocolatey. There's no point showing you, you won't be able to see inside. But um, I love these sampler sizes. Just little 20 grams. What else have I got? Relax, this was part of their January. I think this was the January one. Zigga Zigga, haven't tried. Maple bacon pancakes, that was pretty good. And Good Karma is another one um, that I haven't tried yet. But I will, I'll get through them. And I think I'm going to I think I'm going to reinstate my subscription purely because this is my favorite time of year to drink tea but this is when I will get through the most and I don't want to miss out on all the autumn ones I think they've got a chai one out right now I might I don't know if it's part of the subscription don't quote me on that but I might order um the tin of chai and then if I get it in the subscription I get it in the subscription too wow that was a really big tangent about tea <laughs> Let me drink a little bit of coffee and tidy up my mess very quickly. Okay, put that over there. So I think that's all of my questions. I feel like I whizzed through them, but if anyone has any other questions, I think what I might do is uh, open a ask me question thread on my Ravelry group. Failing that, Instagram is always a good place. If you want to message me, I can add them to my list and I can answer those questions at some other point. Because I'm sure, I'm sure there will be more questions to do another day. So this leads me on to what is in the box. <laughs> I feel like this is like a game show, what's in the box? Um, I was contacted I was emailed by a company called Ben Q Lighting. Now, to be honest, I have to admit, I'd never heard of them and I thought it was a fix. I didn't think this lo was legitimate. Um, I had an email from them on my This Nanny Knits account saying that they had seen my podcast and that they were a lighting company. They told me a bit about them and that they wanted to send me this light because they felt it would be really good for my craft. And I was like, mm, how legit is this? Like little old me, why do they want to send me something for free? <laughs> so obviously I replied, I was very friendly and polite and oh my gosh, this is amazing, thank you, you know. And it actually, it actually followed through and worked. I was pretty amazed. I'm very, very excited. Now I haven't opened the box. I have opened the box, but I haven't opened what's inside the box because I got home from work yesterday and it had arrived. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep, I don't know why I'm apologizing to the plant, but I keep knocking it. Um, they emailed me last week basically just to say, look, we'll send it to you, but it could take two, three weeks. International shipping's crazy, blah, blah, blah. I was like, fine, no problem, like no hurry. 
so I wasn't expecting it for a little while and I came home last night and this massive box was inside and Dan was like what's this box like it was on the doorstep for you I have no idea what's inside and I was like oh my gosh it's my BenQ light because it says BenQ on the side of the box um and I started opening it and he was like Lucy don't you think this should be something you should do on your podcast <laughs> I was like oh yeah I probably should but I really want to open it and see it and he was like no put it back in the box and wait and you can do a live unboxing I was like okay fine so I haven't seen what's in here and I've been really patient well really patient that was yesterday but for me that's really patient so I am going to take all of the stuffing out because it's going to make a really loud crinkly noise and then I'll be back Okay, that is all. I'm gonna have to move this plant. It's just not working for me. That is all of the stuffing. I am going to shimmy it a little bit because it's gonna be quite heavy to lift out. So it's quite a large box. And actually, <laughs> this is so sad. My first thought was, oh wow, that'd be a really good box for packing. <laughs> you know you're old when you get excited about the size of a box. So this is the box. I'm hoping you can see that because I, I have no idea what I was just showing you. And inside, there's another box. I feel like it's a box in a box. Um, I'm gonna have to try and tip it out. Okay, we're in. So, I'm very excited. I was looking, it's really weird actually because it's almost like they could read my mind. I was looking for um, some sort of lamp so in our lounge we have a corner sofa and I tend to sit in the corner and behind me is a table and in the evenings when I like to sit there and knit particularly if it's with dark yarn I put the light on and my husband's like oh it's, it's too bright <laughs> sorry Dan Dan says oh it's too bright so we put a dimmer switch in and we were able to dim them which was fine but sometimes it is still bright we've got these LED ring ceiling lights and they are a bit much um, so I was thinking about looking for a lamp, knowing that we were gonna move, I thought, oh, that would be a good time, you know, once we get in, maybe we'll, we'll find one, we'll buy one, but all the ones I liked were really expensive, and I was like, mm, can I justify that just for a lamp? I'll have a yarn room soon, I can just knit in there. Um, but yeah, it's like they actually read my mind because this is very exciting. So I'm gonna lift it up and show you. So this is obviously gifted to me by BenQ Lighting, which was really kind of them. I haven't been paid to give a review. Obviously, I've been given the item, so this is gifted, but I am going to give my honest review once I've used it, obviously. But I thought I would unbox it here with you and then I can use it for a bit, come back, report to you. Report back to tell you how I liked it. So, this might be a bit noisy. So again, I'm gonna stop talking, raveling on and I can cut this portion out. Okay, I'm back. I've built it. Um, yeah, it's quite fancy. I didn't expect it to be so fancy, but anyway. So, it tells me, I've built it, I've plugged it in. You can push this metal, this is so cool. Push this metal ring and it turns on. And tap it and it turns off. Very cool. Um, and if I pop it back on, I can rotate this knob up here to change it. So that's making it brighter. And it changes the, um, the color temperature. So it's going to more of a warmer tone color. Oops, rookie error, I touched the metal ring. <laughs> so it's a real warm kind of yellowy, ambery tone. 
and then I can turn this knob up here and it goes brighter and whiter. That is so cool. And it's also got an auto dimming mode. So for book reading, touch the metal ring for two seconds. And there's a little light up here. I don't know if you can see it, um, but it goes orange. So I'm guessing that's just the perfect lighting for reading. But it's actually really cool. You can move it. Oh, I keep touching it and turning it on. You can move it up and down. It's kind of on a pivot here and you can also move it kind of, it does move kind of forwards and round, almost like in a circle. It's just stiff, I guess, because it's new. Um, but it literally moves, oh, it's so cool. I cannot wait. I'm gonna go and get this set up um, where I want it and I'm gonna give it a good try. Let's turn it off of that mode. How do I get it back onto normal mode? I don't know. Oh, there you go. You just turn the knob and it comes back into normal mode. But how cool is this? I am loving it. Um, they have a selection. They have a couple of lamps. I'm not sure what the differences are. I should have a look and I will and I will let you know. But you can also buy accessories for them. So you can buy, buy a longer pole for this so you could have it as a floor lamp rather than a table lamp which I'm thinking might be a good option in um, the new house. But for now this is going to be perfectly situated behind the sofa where my little table is because I'm hoping it will kind of go over it will shine the light over the sofa enough for when I'm sat in the corner, then I will be able to sit there of an evening and do my knitting. I am so excited by this, guys. This is amazing. Um, I'm obviously going to use it for a bit before I do a review, but I'm so thankful to Ben Q for my Genie e-reading lamp. They're right. I think it's going to be amazing for my craft, and I can't wait to use it and tell you all about it. So I will leave it here for now. Okay guys, they're done. Two stranger socks with short toes because I ran out of patience, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I don't have time to block them or wash them. She's just gonna have to be grateful they're done. So, oh, I'm so relieved, I'm so relieved. I haven't had a great deal of knitting time past week, I guess. Um, the, I thought I would have more that the girls are off school, but I've been trying to do some jobs and stuff at home. And when you're at home, it's just so easy to just get little bits and little things done when actually I just love to sit here and knit. But reality is I have to be an adult too. Um, I thought I would quickly come on here and show you because I did share with you that I went to Hobbycraft this morning and I have had my eye on this yarn for a while. Um, my friend Karen, is making the Autumn League pullover and I love it. It's a real kind of simple design but it's one of those sweaters that I think you would reach for so often and I think it's just going to be a really good staple in my wardrobe and I have a lot of knitting on the needles I know and I'm not going to cast this on yet but every time I've been in there and seen this yarn I just know that this is what it needs to be. So Oh, that's come undone. I never know how to say this. Serdar. I got this Serdar yarn. Um, how worth a tweed. It's double knits. It's DK. Um, it's, it's not massively tweedy, but it's somewhat tweedy. It's got like greys, browns, beige, whites, a bit of blacks in there. So I thought this would be really good. It is 50% merino. 50% nylon but it's so soft so I just thought um this would be perfect so these are only 50 gram balls so worked out I needed seven of these so they had seven with the same dye lots um yeah so just wanted to share them with you they will become an autumn league pullover but first I am now going to go get some lunch and then I think ugh, I can't decide I'm either going to knit on my anchors because there's a deadline for that or I'm going to catch up on the gnome knit along. I might do the gnome because tonight I've got a zoom call with some friends and I can sit and just knit on the anchors because it's easy and it's just stocking it round and round now. So 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to go eat lunch. I'm going to work on my gnome. You won't see any footage of that because it's a mystery knit along. I am not providing any spoilers because some people may not be caught up. So I will see you in a bit. I'm here to say hi. I'm also here. People are looking at me. I'm also here to um, see if the stranger picks up her socks. So I'm kind of like really aware and looking around me to see if she's going to arrive or not. So she came. I saw her car pull up and I was like, oh, she actually came. I was quite pleased, obviously, that she came. I worked really hard on them, but I was like, oh gosh, okay, be strong, Lucy, you've got this. <laughs> and I feel bad for moaning about making them because she literally like hugged them tight. She was welling up in her eyes. She said, oh, this is the nicest thing that has ever happened to me over the past like two years. I love them. I can feel how warm they are. She was like, I really, really appreciate it. However, she did ask me for more. <laughs> and I just said, look, I'm really sorry. Unfortunately, I don't have the time. I've got a lot of projects going. I'm doing some charity knitting. I'm trying to get some gifts done for my family for Christmas. I don't normally knit for other people. So um, enjoy them, but this was a one-off. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself from saying strong. I felt bad. I did feel really awful, but what can you do? Evening, guys. Um, the day kind of ran away with me. It is now 9.35 p.m. It is absolutely pouring with rain because if I lean into the light, this is what I get. <laughs> um, I've just finished the gym. I've just been to a body balance class and I'm so ready for bed. So I just thought I'd quickly hop on before I got home to say thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far and I hope that you have a great week and there will be a normal podcast episode for you next week. I will see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.